Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, MTK Global, delighted to be joined by a certain Josh Sandon, who is now trained and managed by Mr. Dave Allen. But first off, Josh, how are we, mate? Yeah, all good. Really good, yeah. Um, it's been a, an exciting few weeks for us. So, yeah, just glad to get it out there now and get, get cracking. And the first thing that you said to me when we started this Zoom before I pressed record was that everything's going right for you. I feel like it's, it's just a good time for, you, for yourself. Yeah, it's um, had a lot of like niggles through my career and stuff, and uh, just everything seems to be right at the moment. Um, right decisions, obviously getting getting looked after, trying to get in home corner and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll all work out. Really, can we just address something before we go into a bit of detail, right? Because I love this. The social media age we live in, and you told me you don't have Wi-Fi at home for the simple reason that you don't use it. So, are you somewhere else now getting your Wi-Fi? Yeah, I'm, I'm at my mum's. Yeah, I, I don't have it, mate. I just I'm a right old git. Honestly, I need to sort myself out, don't I? And get with, get down with kids, mate. I'm I'm poor with stuff like this. I love it, mate. Um, before we jump onto the news, obviously your career, like I said. And, the link with Dave and stuff. Can we sort of brush over the COVID period? How have you found it, not just as a boxer, but as a man as well? It's been tough for all. Yeah, I mean, I've got my own business, so I haven't stopped really working. Um, so I've, I've been all right, really. I just keep working and training hard every day and just, just getting self out there and just keep working. And my missus, she, she works for NHS, so she's been working hard and through it all and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's been good. And kids, I've spent a lot of time with kids as well, which I don't really get much time with. So I've, I, lo I love that, you know what I mean? Because they don't see me when I, they don't see me as much as, uh, it's, it's woke up a lot of stuff really, you know, with the kids and stuff. So, but yeah, I love it, mate. Yeah, I, I, it's been all right for me, so I can't complain at, at all. Glad to see you've got some sorts of positives out of it. Um, as I said at the start, so Dave Allen, I spoke to him, well, I speak to him quite a bit, Dave, and he said he's going to be sort of guiding you now. Um, What's your relationship like with Dave? Do you guys go back quite a way? Yeah, I, I met him quite a lot um, at the beginning of my career. Um, things took off for me quite a bit when I uh, when I beat Dominic Accolade. Because um, I remember Gorman, Nathan Gorman, was meant to be fighting him as well um, for the English title, and I upset that. So I met, like, I met them both through stuff like that and got plenty of sparring in with both of them. And, you know, um, it was really good for my career and stuff like that. Um, and me and Dave, obviously, he used to come to Uddisfield Gym and I used to go to some gyms for where he were and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I, I really got on with him. He's a lot like me. He's just, just a normal... He doesn't beat around the bush. He's straight to the point. He's normal. He's funny, you know what I mean? He's just... <laughs> he's mental, isn't he? But that... that you know, we've all got that sort of stuff in us, and it's people think it's uh, uncommon nowadays to be to act like that. But it isn't. It's just that's a lot of people who we are. I'll tell you something now, right? And all these bit, I find it funny. Me, I find this very funny because um, I obviously took one of my pals, and and he and he and he studies quite a lot of stuff. He's very business minded, um, and he just went. He knows a lot more than what he he acts like. He's a very clever man, is Dave, and I'll and I'll and I'll vouch for that. He knows what he's doing. Well, is, is it a bonus as well that you're working with someone who is fresh out of the pro game? Obviously, you know the pros like the back of your hand as well. But Dave was fighting a year ago, eighteen months ago. So, and well, listen, I think he'll fight again. I, I, I don't. There's no. I mean, and if he wants me to help him for sparring and I'll help Dave best I can to my ability as well. It's, listen. We're all in this game. It's a very hard sport, right? It's the loneliest sport in the world. And when stuff ain't going right, it's not going right. When stuff's going good, it's the best in the world. Do you know what I mean? But we have these ups and downs and people say this and that. And do I think Dave will fight again? Yeah, I do. And and I and it, it, that will not impact my career because I'm trying to push for, for, for better things and to better my life and better my career. So... If he can help me along the way, which he says he will do, and help me, and and I speak to him nearly every day, and and I keep checking in with him, and I'm doing my runs, doing my fit, doing my fitness work, doing my strength work. Obviously, 
I've got a nutritionist now, so I'm checking in with him all the time and he's sending me plans and I've just changed my life, basically. This, You know, in space of three or four weeks, it's just, it's changed completely. Uh, it's like, a rest, you know, like when they say a rest is as good as a, as good as like keep working and stuff like that. So it's it, a change. It's it's a change, and it's obviously I'm happy to be in this sort of predicament. And I know he's got a lot of other fighters, but if he's happy and it makes him happy, and he's no and he's got no problems with that, and he's you know what I mean. That's fine. You know what I mean. I am bothered. I, I I train myself. I can train myself. I'm not I'm not a, an idiot. Do you know what I mean? But it's just he, he wants to train me, and I and I'd like him to train me. I've done a few pads with him and, and he knows what he's doing and he knows how he wants me to fight and I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mean? And he, and he likes the way I fight. So... Is it as much a profile-related thing as well? Because, I mean, he bought, like, a mini following. You look at Danny Morrell. He had a mini following before he'd even laced up gloves as a pro. So he is going to shine eyes on you as well. Well, that, that's it. And, and, a lot, and a lot of people obviously look at me and think, well, you know, I've, I've a cut. From what I have accomplished so far in my career, I've had hardly no help. This is what people don't understand. I don't have a big following. I don't have this and that. Stuff like that does not entertain me, mate. I, I, listen, I, I I fight for the fans and for people to think, Christ, I like that. You know, he can fight. You know, he I turn up to win. I want to win. I don't want to lose. Nobody likes losing. Anybody that says they like losing, just don't entertain my mind. I want to win. And this is what it's all about. And And... With me being in a good place, good people, a lot of positive people around me. I like positivity. I hate negativity. I'm getting to a point now, I just don't want it around me. It's hard enough life and doing stuff that I do day in, day out. Having negative people, it just doesn't work. And and I see this from a lot of people and they're, you know, and, and they're very negative and, and, and people around them are negative. And it just reflects on you all the time. Well, you mentioned the fact that no one likes losing it. I don't know, I'm thinking, would it have been easy to slip down the path, perhaps, of becoming someone who gets fed to prospects? Because, you know, you've got a couple of losses on your record, you're tough, you've been in with some names, so people might look and think, you know what, if he needs a fight, it will look good if I can get my prospect to fight him. And is it easy to slip into that mentality of accepting defeat, I suppose, is a problem? The, the, the thing is with me, though, but I don't do... I, I, don't, I don't go to lose... A lot of, I mean, I've I've seen it on the circuit. A lot of people do just take the money. Listen, that's what I mean. Is I'm it, not have you seen money, that it's easy for people to fall into that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah. I, I know lads that I know lads that I, I, I won't mention names because I'm not that sort of person. You know, if they're happy doing that and they're happy earning money and they see that sort of thing, fair enough. I I I. It sounds daft. But if you don't have a goal in life and you don't believe that you can be the best, what is the point in doing it? I've never done anything in my life if I can't do it 100%. 100%. It's pointless. I might as well, instead of getting hit on the head and taking a lot of damage and stuff, I might as well walk away from the spot for what I've done so far as well and just say, right, I've done what I've done. I've done, I got in a top 10 in country after two fights, whatever, Walk away. You've done what you've had to do. Leave it alone. But I don't want to do that. But it is that route that you can quite easily just go, oh, fine, I'll just turn up and earn four or five grand. Or it, it doesn't interest me. I can earn that on a job. It doesn't interest me. I, you, do you understand what I mean? It, money, money. I, I, I've, I've been very fortunate because obviously, I, you know, I work hard. I've worked hard all my life and I've saved and stuff like that. And I've put money away for a rainy day and stuff like that. And hopefully when I retire from my jobs and, and, and boxing, I'll, I'll be sat on quite a nice desk. Thing. But that's my, that that's the way I've done my life. But you can quite easily go down that route of going in with, and be called the journeyman. I don't believe anybody's called the journeyman because it takes some balls to get in that ring. No matter who you are. I mean, people, I mean, I see a lot of stuff on Instagram and social media and stuff like that. And these people say, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And, you know, I took me out of fair. Anybody that wants to have a fight in front of people, because it's hard. It, it's really hard. And and when you dedicate your life to it like I have, it's it's even harder when you lose. It hurts. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. I mean, I lost in Germany and it hurt me. I, you know what I mean? I, I come home and 
I spoke to me, me missus and I said, I don't, I don't think I want to carry on. And things didn't, it, it wasn't right. I didn't feel right when I were over there. I don't know what it were. I just didn't feel right. And it's just, it's just the way, it, the way the world works. But I feel it's like, I've, I don't know. It's just like a new lease of thing with Dave. I don't, we had a chat. I spoke to him and it, <laughs> I went over to see him and he just sat down and said, look, you know, this is how I feel and this is, you know, this is what I want you to do. And I was happy with what he said. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. As long as I can, I'm happy. I'll be happy to fight anybody. Not a problem. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing to hear that because it does sound like you're genuinely sitting there now and I couldn't really get my hands on this and, and try and, and try and win, achieve something possibly. And but did you sit down and work a path out about this or did you and Dave just, say, look, we have to take it just step by step. Because especially with the uncertainty, it's quite hard to carve a path out. No, just take it step by step and see what comes. Just roll with it. Yeah, like, like you say, it's really tough at the moment with restrictions and and people are putting chores on and they don't know whether they're going to get cancelled. And it's it's frustrating for all of us because we're all still training. And the thing is, at the moment, is it's hard to keep training when you've got no end like the, even people now, they're still training. They've got these dates and they're being cancelled. It, it, it is not fair. It's it's and it's and it takes a lot of time and effort, you know. But hopefully there will be a light end at tunnel, and hopefully we can all start cracking and make some great fights for the fans. And that's what that's what it's all about. Let's go over your career briefly, actually. Right. So the upset at the time over yeah. Dominic Accolade. Then the loss to Tom Little, win over Jay McFarlane in there, the opportunity ultimate boxer, win over Kamil Sokolowski, who is one tough bastard and he is well respected in the sport, despite the fact that a lot of people perhaps yeah, do yeah. sometimes call him a journeyman. Um, a loss in the semi final. Has it been stop start now? Is it like momentum? Get with Dave, get everything knuckled down, and it's momentum now. I, I don't think it's a stop start. I just think it's. I mean, I, I like Chris Ashton. He's always, you know what I mean? I do. A lot of people, you know, they say, listen, it doesn't matter to me. I'd like to say thanks as well to Chris and, and, and stuff like that. He's, he's been a fantastic manager and a, and a friend. I, I, I do believe he's, and I, you know, and, and I like Tyrone, you know, and the Huddersfield team over there. They've, they've worked wonders with me from really nothing. You know, I, you've got to think, I haven't been in this game a long time. I come from a background of rugby league. And yeah, I, it, it, sometimes it is down to the manager and the thing to get you these right fights and, and at the right time and stuff like that, which I do believe. Um, and I think it's just a different route I needed to go down. I don't, I don't think the route, because I, I was becoming a journeyman and I, and I don't want to do that. I, I walk away from the spot. Listen, I, it, this is what people don't understand. I don't, I don't need it. You know what I mean? I want to succeed. I do stuff to succeed. I don't do stuff to fail. What's the point? I might as well just walk away. And that's how I feel. I do honestly believe. And when they say, I want to become a British champion or a world champion. No, I, I don't want to become that. I want to become the best. And 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 people, why settle for anything less? But people actually do believe that you, you're nuts. They think you get hammered. And, but nobody bought believe, believe that Ruiz would beat Anthony Joshua. Nobody believed that, you know, I mean, you're going down years down the line. You look, I mean, I like to watch some really old boxers. Now we're going back into the 60s and stuff like that and, and 80s and stuff. I mean, I watched a fight with Bert, um, I'm sure it was Bert Cooper against um, Van Dolefield. He took that fight on two-week notice. You watch that fight. Now, I'll tell you something now. If he took that fight on two-week notice and he, and he fought around today, he'd be, he'd, be, he'd be a world champion now. Because fighters can't fight like that anymore. They're not bred. They, they, these guys were actually brought up on nothing. They had nothing. They were fighting to feed the family. They were fighting to feed themselves. They had nothing. Nowadays, everybody's got everything, haven't they? iPads, nice houses, nice flash cars, everything like that. It, it, it doesn't entertain me, stuff like that. Love it. Love it. That was, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed that, actually, that little sort of couple minutes segment there for you Josh um there are so many good fights at British levels well. I mean if I just I don't know pull some names out of uh thin air Simon Valili Cash Ali Nick Webb who won the UB tournament uh you was in it is tasty like you're not just going into a division where there's a couple good fights you're going into a division where there's some fucking beauties in there 
Oh, listen, Mark Bennett, a rematch with him. Fantastic yeah. fight. First one were brilliant, you know what I mean? And hopefully we can do it again. There's, I mean, Jay McFarlane, when he gets his head on, he can fight. You know, uh, Nick Webb, there's loads, Nathan Gorman. You know what I mean? These guys are full-time athletes. I am not full-time, I am part-time. I have got a job, I work full-time, that's my job. This is what a lot of people don't take into consideration with me. I've done what I've done and I am a full-time athlete. I don't even touch weights. I haven't even got the time to touch weights or going to a gym. Yeah. Well, look, hopefully look, now this can sort of, I suppose, kickstart um, potentially turning full-time. Is that something that could ever happen? Could you ever become a full-time pro, you think? Well, I, I do believe so, yeah, and, and, and that's what we all work for, and, it, and it'd be absolutely fantastic. I mean, I love my job. I've never, I mean, I took I took a big gamble a couple of years ago, and I quit a job, and then I set up my own business, and you know what? I took a risk, and 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 I just thought bollocks to it. If I fail, I fail, but I took the risk, and it's it was successful. And, but why couldn't you do the same in a sport? Do, 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 do you know what I mean? People people have, have, are afraid to take risks in life because they think they're going to fail. It doesn't matter if you fail, just keep going at it. Something will come across eventually, hopefully, won't it? Amen. Amen. Well, look, Josh, I ain't going to uh, keep you for any longer, but thanks for jumping on with me. Nice to see you've got all, uh, things, I don't know, things sorted and we can potentially see you in some cracking fights because, like I said, there are cracking fights out there your game there's loads of game lads at heavyweight so um yeah and it's good to hear from you as well yeah, it's yeah. Good to hear from you. no no thank you very much for for letting me do interview i really appreciate it thank you very much <laughs>